This one's for Hashirama Senju. So what do you do if you're in a 10-2 second category and you want to level the playing field? Now that's a rewording of do I think it's possible to be world class in sprinting without drugs? Or more simply put, if you're not on the hot sauce, can you still be a spicy sprinter? Firstly, the world level has been influenced by drugs, but it has also been massively influenced by equipment and track surfaces too. Now the strength requirements for an elite level sprinter are achievable naturally. A lot of those boys are surprisingly weak in the weights room considering the wattage that they produce on the track. And to me this proves that the relationship between eccentric concentric weight strength and plyometric strength isn't anywhere near as clear cut as we're led to believe. And more than that, there are a ton of mid-tier athletes that can outlift and out-train an elite level sprinter in the gym. But the hard work blah blah is good for the corporate VIP types who lap it up because it's right in line with what they get taught in their leadership and motivation seminars. And the general public buy it because they're beaten into submission at work and by the media who act like some kind of radio station that plays the same record so many times, it's gonna be number one. And the only ones who see through this deception are the guys in 2nd to 8th place and the lower tier athletes, because they all smell the rat. And if we can accept that there are no 11.5 second sprinters who take drugs and suddenly carve a second and a half off their time, because fast sprinters were fast when they were 16 without any drugs, bar the internal natural puberty drugs. Then if you can naturally run in the low 11 seconds during teenage without training, then you've got the stuff to make an elite athlete. I mean, come on, if Jesse Owens could run 10-2 on a cinder track, then sub 10 seconds on the current tracks with the better blocks, the rubber surface, the better shoes, definitely doable. But you need to realize that the commercial packaging of sport is not designed to help you individually reach your best. And don't for one second think there's any true desire to find the best human performance. Just look at the one false start in your out rule. We're given the best performance and winner before the really important adverts come on. And setting a limit on reaction times is daft. The whole point about elite performance is that you're breaking barriers and improving. In Atlanta 96, Limford didn't actually false start. He technically false started. He went after the gun, but he just went too soon after the gun because some egghead had decided that no one could react that fast. And taking drugs isn't going to help you beat that rule. So, if you've got the neural wiring to run fast as a team, then adding the necessary strength is very possible. But is it easy to do, considering there's so much misinformation and mystery about how to add that strength? No. And that is where the natural athlete may have an advantage. Here's my view. I operate a different paradigm. I think it's all about filling a knowledge deficit to solve limiting factors and to prevent injuries. There's no drug for knowledge deficit and there's no drug for injury prevention. If shooting for the highest intensity is all you need to win, then the needle's necessary. If producing the highest volume is all you need to succeed, then the pill's paramount. And in certain endeavors, those are very important. But if a deep and detailed knowledge of your anatomy and training in sport is all you need to succeed, then the quicker you get learning, the better. So you've got to realize that while steroids do allow you to put on muscle and allow you to retain muscle while you're losing fat, these are aesthetic characteristics. And steroids also allow you to work harder for longer and recover faster, muscularly. But remember, Sprinting's biggest issue isn't muscular, it's neural. And working harder for longer is only useful if the work you're doing is good for you. Otherwise, you're just treading water furiously. The skill I'm remarkably jealous of, to be fair. I mean, my PB for treading water is about 14 seconds. It's exhausting. And recovering fast is a sweet deal. But when people recover faster, that's muscular recovery. So they train more, which means they need to recover faster, and pretty soon, they're back in the same position of not recovering fast enough for the neural workload. I mean, what I'm trying to say here is that steroids is not a magic answer. I mean, in bodybuilding, they can fix a lot of bad training because bodybuilding is essentially 
Volume times intensity. But in performance sport, they don't, because performance is execution times intensity. If you take steroids in performance sport, it does everything up to 10. Yeah, your strengths, but also your weaknesses. And if you're careening out of balance naturally, it'll happen even faster on steroids. So how does a natural athlete compete? Well, like I said, you focus on your limiting factors and you solve them as quickly and often as possible. Learning to identify them and solve them makes you a master of your own body and that knowledge is more important than anything that a laboratory can produce in a multifaceted performance sport. You see, steroids isn't going to help you get out the blocks better if your training wasn't doing that before. You see, steroids isn't going to help you transition to a better top speed position if your training wasn't doing that before. And steroids won't stop you blowing out your hamstring if your training wasn't helping your hamstrings before. You see, the great thing about sprinting specifically is there's such an enormous knowledge deficit that anyone who shows talent and learns their body well creates their own unlevel playing field in their own favour. Just wait until Wadda get wind of the idea that knowledge is a performance enhancer. They'll end up on the banned list, right next to Vicks VapoRub. And then there are issues like cost and quality of the drugs because of counterfeit products. But pound for pound drugs are far cheaper than the supplement industry and far more effective because basically they work and 99% of supplements don't. But the quality issue, that can't be denied if it comes from the black market. So that's just down to a risk assessment. Personally, I don't trust those greasy burger vans not to be able to all cut a hanky-panky in the back. If you want to trust some product that could be mixed in some blood bathtub? But according to vegans, they're convinced that you're already getting a boatload of steroids from the meat that you're currently eating. Meaning, you're already probably consuming more steroids than Jesse Owens did. And he was fast as hell. I'm not quite sure how they think that meat filled with steroids would be perceived by most guys in fitness as a bad thing, but... But one thing that drugs do not do is increase muscle activation caused by faulty biomechanics. They don't change firing patterns, which is why, despite the meat feast, gyms are still packed to the rafters with bad form. <laughs> but there is an answer for the natural athlete that wants to compete and win and stay clean. Do you know what works just as well as doing drugs? Thinking you're doing drugs. People scoff at the placebo effect, but it's called the placebo effect, not the placebo non-effect. Because it's effective. If you believe that you're downing some illicit potion, you'll perform as if you've downed an illicit potion. Studies have been done. I can't be bothered to quote them. The interesting thing is, they got their PBs. Then they were told they were given the placebo, and their PBs evaporated. That's the power of the mind. So if you want to be really generous, give family and friends the gift of fake steroids because that's a truly selfless and harmless gift and just hope that someone does it for you. Put that on your 2017 Christmas wish list. I hope this helps. Right, bust me a thumbs up, because let me tell you something. Makes me feel good. Now that you don't have to pin it to win it, shout away in the comments, babe. If you like my vibe, please subscribe. Woo! Woo!